Kev, it's been nearly eight years since your very first interview here at Manchester City with Sky. So we thought we'd revisit that and ask you the same questions we asked all those years ago. It actually took place before your first game, no, your second game, I think it was, against Stoke back in August 2016. Do you remember that? Does it feel like it's been nearly eight years? Yeah, I, know. I remember perfectly. First of all, we against Stoke. Everyone is scared of me. With the Stoke in the time was the Premier League and it was really difficult to, to win away and, and the people say how difficult and it was difficult. Um, yeah, but a uh, long time ago already. Well, it's better, it's better arrive in the last minute with two or three zero than one, one zero or one one or two one. Good spirit and the opponents fight until 90 minutes. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. You arrive in the in the last minute with the gap, but the result is, is tied, so everything can happen. Yeah, so the first question we asked you all those years ago was, what have you learned about the Premier League so far from your first game? And did anything surprise you at all? And I guess that's still a valid question eight years on. Does the Premier League continue to surprise you? Yeah, it's in tougher and tougher, and now managers are coming better. The teams are better, and uh, more games. and. Uh, and that thing when then when Desmi surprised me, I asked, I, I, I think I answered, give me more time because it's just arrived. But yes, continue to be excited, ex excited competition and and every every game and every competition is, is hard. Yeah, most of the, most of the people spoke about that, but uh, just one game, so give me a little more time. But now what I believe is one, you know, the pitch is the pitch and uh, the. The size, the line, the sign is, is the same. So one ball, and uh, it depends on the player. When you have a team and you use all the pitch, and all the eleven players want the ball, want to play, everything is the same. The next question we ask you, you said back then, look, it's eleven players and one ball, so it's the same game. And we ask you whether there is similarities or differences between managing here versus managing in Germany or, or in Spain. You said back then you needed a bit more time, but what are the key differences now? But I would say that I would say it's uh, maybe the physicality, but at the end is in Spain and Germany, the two places I was I've been manager is as human beings, eleven players, the same length of the pitch. Uh, in Germany we don't play twelve against twelve. So So you the, stick by that that it is the same game regardless end, of what league you're playing. Yeah, it's a football game, but of course the, the difference I would say uh, the Meyerman uh, you are winning 2-0 and it looks like, wow, in 10 minutes they can score three goals open and, and, and I had the feeling in every game, everything can happen, everything. So there's no doubt about that. So, yeah, so it's a little bit, you know, maybe you, you control less in terms, you know, what can happen than maybe in Spain and Germany, but at the end of what I said, it's 11 against 11, human beings and feelings and it's the same in everyone. Is it the toughest league to manage in here, though? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I would not say this is in Spain and in, in, in Germany. This looks like I would undermine that that league is completely the opposite. I learn a lot and it's really good. But here for for the weather, for more games, another competition, another cup, and you know everything is is more. The weather, <laughs> the weather's a problem. It's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Fair it's enough. It's them. boring outside, say, isn't it? So <laughs> yeah. are you try and avoid that. I want the ball. 90 minutes. I fight, I, I, when I don't have the ball, I go high pressing because I want the ball, not because I like to defend there, but when I there, I am more exposed. I am, you know, a little bit behind. But I go there because I want the ball. We asked you then back then, if you had to sum up your footballing philosophy in one sentence, what would it be? And you spoke a lot about the time about simply wanting to keep the ball, wanting to press high and, and not be exposed. Would you say that although you have changed and your management style in certain times has changed, that philosophy is what stayed the same? Yeah, yeah. The biggest principles are the same, but of course I adjust a lot of things. The same, in the experiences, the same, the tactics ways. I, I improve a lot. Is that due to the players improve. or the league yeah, or the yeah, team? Yeah, yeah, the players, the players, the opponents, the league, and and everything. So I learn a lot of my players and I change a lot of things because of my players. They teach me, they show me what I have to change. Mm -hmm. People believe, no, I've changed that. They, the, the, the managers, if you observe or try to do it with staff, room and stuff, you learn what you have to change through your players. They teach you. It's completely the opposite. The people say, no, I did this. No, no. They, with the details, oh, they are telling me we have to do this to get him better. And that is, when we play one striker different than the other one, a fullback different than the other one, a central different than the other one, you have to adapt. 
Yeah, to that, to them. It's impossible. But when Sucre fights, for what reason? But you lose a game? If you believe in that, you have to keep going. So when, when it's going to happen, we're going to use the goalkeeper, going to a wrong pass, and you're going to receive a goal. And the people say, why you don't hit ball? No, we have to insist on that. If I believed and you did that and, uh, and it's not productive for the team, I would not do that. But I was a football player and manager. And always when I did that, I would score a lot of goals and concede few. And that's why I believe in that. Eight years ago then, we asked whether in order to get results, you would sacrifice your obsession with build-up play. You instantly shut that down then. You said no. But at times you've seen Manchester City play with a more direct approach, depending on the opposition. So yeah. is that still definitely a no? Or at times do you have to adapt and, and change depending on who you're playing? As much they press you high, as much you have to, to attack quicker. Mm -hmm. And as much they don't press high, more patience and process and go in the opposite halfway, take a coffee, rest, <laughs> go to a little bit lunchtime and after to do it. So it depends on the opponent. The opponent will dictate the way you have to attack quicker or slower. And so many managers have said that you have been a huge influence on them in terms of their management style. Do you feel like you've changed how football is viewed and, and played in this country but also across the world? I would love to say yes for my incredible ego that I have, but I cannot answer this question. When you hear so many managers saying, we want to do what Pep Guardiola mm -hmm. does, we want to adapt that philosophy, you have to think that you've changed, even not how it's played, how it's looked at and viewed differently. My advice I would tell them, so uh, do it if you believe it works for you to do what Man City has done in these years. Otherwise, don't do it because you will fail. So the biggest mistake is try to make a copy-paste with something you don't believe just for the fact that that team won. But that team tomorrow will lose and after you don't have anything. So if they do it is because they believe doing that, they are more happier, they can convince the players and they are closer to win games. Because the people influence on me is because we won a lot. Mm -hmm. I won a lot depends not just me. I'm a part of that, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. But it's players, the hierarchy the powerful, financial powerful that we have, like many other clubs, for many, many reasons. This is the reason why. But if uh, they see our games and they are, you know, satisfied to the like we see, they want to try to do it, welcome. So always I make, I have a lot of influence for managers in the past or players in the past when I was a football player. And I make a copy and I take it and I steal it and I said, I want that, I want to do it. But all just the things that really, really believe it. Otherwise, doesn't work. Copy pasting wall doesn't work if you don't feel it. But I will, I'll go for your ego a bit then. You are one of the most influential managers in world football. You'd have to agree with that statement. Well, I've been, we have, I've been in Barcelona by Munich and Man City and we won a lot. In the short time of period, mm -hmm. in the short time, we won a lot of titles. That's why, of course, I am, we are some of the, you know, it's normal, but just for the results. Yeah, but every player has his own qualities. And this quality can be better, it can improve that. And with the time, improve. And I'm pretty sure all the players that right now we have, with training session, with passion, with uh, understand the game and why we make this kind of things and not the other one, but always, always there is a why, they can improve. So all of them. So I don't have doubt about that. We asked then how you assess a player as to whether or not he's the right sort of player for you and, and what you want. Has that changed eight years on now that you have that specific style and you've got exactly the team that you want here at Manchester City? No, no, City? I adapt sometimes to the players, the qualities. Don't my, 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 the way we want to play is so flexible. It's not about just has to be here because I'm here and I'm the boss. No, absolutely not. I listen to my players. I had the feeling in some players when they play, they have to play in different way to help them. So that's why it's so nice. Otherwise, in years doing the same, every single day, the same game, the same, will be so boring. I will not be here. Yeah. But you so see playing Luton is completely different than playing with United because the defend Luton mm -hmm. is different and the play United is different and you have to adapt. You see certain qualities though, like if you look at Doku as an example, he's a slightly different player to ones you've had before. So there must be certain qualities in players that you look for and say, yes, that's going to suit how I want to play. Listen, in case you ask me the Jeremy Doku, what is his biggest strength? It's dribble, no? Mm -hmm. Dribble. If your quality is there, dribble. I would tell you what is better to do it. I try to provide to Jeremy Doku as much through our game chances to use his dribble 
as much as possible during the game. This is my job. Mm -hmm. So you get the ball as much in the better conditions with more space to control to dribble your opponent. This is my job. I dribble, my friend. <laughs> I know uh, the people expect the best as possible. Good. The people expect we're going to play a fantastic uh, football and we're going to win all games. Good. So I can control, I cannot control that. So I have to accept that. I, I accept it. And, uh, and I am just focusing my players in the games. My players in the games. And after the game, we are now going to analyze what's going on against Sunderland, what's happened against Steaua Bucharest. It's Warstock City. So I'm not living here, oh, it's going bad, the people is going to... Uh, must, I know the people is going to criticize me. I know that. So the skies and the big analysts, old football players, and the media is going to, to say bad things when I'm going to play, when I'm going to play good, and especially when I'm going to win games. That happened here, in Timbuktu, in Africa, in Australia, in Spain, in Italy, in Germany, in everywhere. It's the same. Maybe here is huge, more media, more programs to be, more old players and know exactly what you have to do. Okay, accept that. So it's part of the business. So finally, we said, because of your reputation and what you've achieved previously, there are great things expected of you here at Manchester City. Well, mm. I think it's fair to say now, we look at all the titles you've, you've won, five Premier Leagues. I won't go through the whole list because it's very long, but of course, culminating with the Champions League, you must have exceeded even your own expectations. Uh, yeah, now because we won the Champions League. Otherwise, we will not be excel our expectations. So, yeah, I had to live with that. I'm sorry, but what happened in Barcelona and Bayern Munich, I had to live with that. It happened in the first year when I arrived. I arrived here, I said, you have to win the Champions League. Sorry? <laughs> let me settle, let me start. You have to do it. Yeah, it's, it's what it is. So I accept that. I live in good moments, bad moments sometimes, but yeah, now it's excel because we won the Champions League. And and I said many times recently, so I like to win the Champions for the fact when Champions League, but especially to give credit to the all other titles, especially the Premier League we won in the past. It wasn't fair for the guys, for the club, you know, for the fact you don't win the Champions League, don't give credit for the the Premier League. That was not that was not fair. But I understand how I know how it works. But I liked for the Champions League because it's the first time we won it, we never won it for the seven years and that's why it's nice. When the people say, ah, they took seven years, that's why it is nice. But it was difficult. You have to educate everyone that things give credit, they give value when are difficult. No one is well, for that they have to win it. We knew it for the moment I land here, how difficult it is win the Champions League, how difficult it is. Because in my career I'm 14 years uh, manager. I won three times Champions League. I'm a loser. I lost 11. Do you know that? I lost 11 Champions League. I don't think you can call yourself a no, loser. No, 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 of course. <laughs> I lose more than I win Champions League. But it happened in all the managers, all the athletes. Mm -hmm. So it's part of the process, lose games, experiences, the defeats. It helped me to understand more the team, the club. I would like to arrive and do it here. The people expect don't do it. They want to do it. It's normal. Because we won a lot. But the important is be consistent and continue and, and try it again and try it again and try it again. And at the end it happened. So that at was the, the game changer in terms of exceeding your expectations? Yeah, of course, yeah, but was, yeah, yeah for, for the people, for me as well, of mm -hmm. course. I'm really pleased to be part of the team like we won for the first time the Champions League. Of course we are very pleased. But I, 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 I would at home without the Champions League just in case it would not happen. I said, wow, the period in the city was pff, unbelievable. The many games we won, the way we played and the consistency we proved last week. We go to Luton, a team like to win there, all the Premier Leagues know, teams know how difficult it is and behave, still now behaving the way we behave. Players, important players, won everything and go there and do the job and run and do the job what to do. This is the secret of our team. So it's this ability to be humble enough and continue, continue to do it again. So you've just won the treble. Does that feeling of winning ever decrease or does it feel just as no. good as the very first time you won? Even higher. It's addictive. Addictive? Yeah, win is addictive.